Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for having me. So today on the summit, we have talked about uh, Python ed education, and it seems to be that I'm in the other end of the spectrum here because this is university ed education. So my name is Anna Lehmann, and this is a compact view of my 20 years as a uh, electronics engineer. So I have had the luck and honor to have a very diverse career, I think. Um, but now I, I work for uh, the University of Aarhus, where I am uh, teaching bachelor students uh, in electronic engineering. So the talk that I'm going to present to you today, I'll go through these uh, items here just short of what, what we are doing now, what kind of ed education we have now, and what uh, a little bit about how um, the Danish uh, university educations uh, look. Uh, a brief introduction to the online education landscape, if you could call it that. Uh, and then I'll go into more about what are the challenges for, for education uh, for online education, uh, mainly um, what, what can we foresee as challenges and, and how should we address those challenges. Then I'll present what we are trying to do in our uh, transformation of, of the existing education and lastly how Python can fit into to this uh, uh, online education of uh, on university education. So the existing uh, education that we have today is, uh, we call it electronic design engineer. It's an accredited uh, bachelor education. It takes three and a half years, uh, where there is a six months uh, internship uh, uh, included. We have a very good uh, cooperation with the local um, industry. So we, we are able to place uh, almost all our students in, in, uh, in companies for these uh, six months. And it tends to be that, that after they have been six months at a, at a company, most of them will write their, uh, their bachelor thesis at that company or from the tasks that these companies give them. And a, a large percentage of, of those who have uh, solved problems for, for the companies will continue in employment in, at these companies. Uh, the education is located in Herning, which is in the west part of, uh, of Denmark. Uh, it's not uh, a large city, but we are lucky to have a uh, quite large uh, number of uh, industries, and some of them are quite big. Uh, the most, uh, the largest one is probably Siemens Wind Power, which is located uh, less than 20 miles from, from, the, uh, from the education. And of course, there's a lot of, uh, of wind power related uh, companies that support uh, Vestas and, uh, and Siemens, which are the, mo uh, the largest uh, wind power uh, factories or industries we have. Uh, so it's a kind of, Exclusive education, we are, we have, we will only uh, accept 40 um, students each year. Uh, so it's kind of, it's a small uh, education. So a little bit about University of Aarhus. So University of Aarhus is uh, the largest university in Denmark, even though that Aarhus is only the second largest uh, city uh, in Denmark. But over the last five years, there has been a lot of uh, mergers uh, in, in the Danish uh, university se sector. So, and actually, um, well, Aarhus has, uh, has swallowed up a large number of uh, smaller campuses, uh, among them the campus in Herning. So in Denmark, the uh, tuition is free on the university educations. And uh, the students uh, will get an allowance uh, while doing the studies. 
and they can apply for uh, uh, low uh, interest student loans. Um, the, the, the allowance is almost uh, enough for the, for the students to, to live up from it. It's around uh, 800, um, 800 euros a month. Uh, but they are also allowed to, to uh, work. That, there's, a, there's a limit for how much they can earn in, in the, these uh, student jobs. But uh, uh, yeah, um, sometimes when, when our students go abroad and talk about their, their conditions as a student, uh, the, People won't believe them, but it's actually true. Yeah. And I, but I actually think it's a good idea. Uh, I, I'm happy with this uh, system because it uh, it allows people to focus on their uh, education, and that's a good thing. So, of course, we have all heard about uh, these online, these new uh, guys in the uh, in the education sector. Uh, Coursera, Can University, Open EDX, and Stanford, how everyone and their mother seems to, to have, um, have offerings in, in online education. Uh, and and, and I, I think that the traditional uh, university education are slowly coming around to seeing that, that the, there's a need for it, there's a demand for, for on the, on online education efforts. Or offerings. Uh, so, um, but what we have seen in in Herning, uh, what we were trying to do in Herning, we try to, we, we're not going to emulate uh, these offerings. We are trying to take the best uh, out of them and then provide it in our uh, setting. We want to, we want our education to still be accredited. We want our students to be able to obtain this uh, allowance. So they, sh that should be the same. Uh, level of quality and control uh, in order for, for, for the, uh, the education to still be accredited. Uh, that's very important for us because that's how the university gets paid. If, if the, the education uh, loses its accreditation, we cannot be reimbursed for, for the work that we are, we are doing. So it's extremely important that we don't uh, lose that uh, accreditation. So, uh, the, uh, as we see it, uh, the online offerings that we, we see is mostly uh, focused on single subjects, single topics, uh, a single course. Um, eventually, maybe uh, a kind of certification that, that can be used for, to document your skills. Uh, the, the way that they are, uh, are taught is through uh, short videos uh, explaining the topic and then there will be some problems that the, the student can solve and uh, after each larger section, section there will be uh, some tests either that, that the student will score themselves to, to, to uh, see how they are doing or there will be uh, if there are also offerings where the, there will be a teacher or a, a system that grades uh, the problem solving skills of the students. So, um, this, this is what we see, uh, the, that the way that the online education is uh, going. And of course, it, it, there's a lot of, uh, um, of good things in, in this. It's, it's nice for, for the students to be able to, to uh, study when they have the time and they, the uh, the drive for it, and, and, it's, uh, and they can do it at home uh, and in their own pace. But we also see that there are some challenges uh, to this approach, uh, especially if you, if you want to have a full-time education based on, on online offerings. We, uh, we see a possible uh, challenge in how, how can we keep the online students uh, focused how can we avoid that they s spend too much uh, time on, on everything else that you can do when you sit up in front of a computer? Uh, if, if, we, uh, if we have uh, full-time students uh, that, that's only uh, doing their study through uh, online offerings, we, 
there is a, a real uh, uh, danger that, that, that people get uh, isolated, that they won't, uh, they won't feel as, uh, as if they are part of a larger group or uh, uh, that they are all alone and, and so, stuff like that. We, we, we are actually we are fighting uh, these uh, things uh, about is isolation, even though that we have a campus and we have uh, people coming to classes. Even, even in those situations, we, we actually see that there are some students that, that for one or another reason, uh, get uh, isolated or feel alone. So I think that's a real uh, issue here. Uh, also, when, when you are, when you are, um, when you're doing online uh, learning, you, you are the driver for the motivation and, and it's, of course, so, so online uh, uh, learning will, uh, f to some extent, uh, favorize people who are good at motivating themselves. Of course, uh, people who are good at motivating themselves also have a, an advantage in, in, in traditional education, but, but uh, I, I don't think that the motivation part is going to be uh, smaller in online uh, offerings. And finally, there's also some uh, some challenges for, for the teaching the faculty. We, we need to, pr to plan uh, uh, differently. Uh, we need to be better to anticipate questions because w if there's no uh, direct interaction with uh, the students, we have to prepare uh, in, in a dif different way. So um, I'll briefly go this is not a, 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 a talk about uh, learning theory, but I, I would want to emphasize a, a, a few things that in the way that we look at, uh, at teaching and, and learning. Of course, if, 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 if we talk about teaching, then the important actor is the teacher. So if we, if we look at education as something that we have to teach, then we will focus on the teacher. And maybe that's not uh, the most beneficial uh, uh, way to look at, uh, at education or, or learning, because maybe we, we, the outcome of the teaching should be that the, that the student learns something. Uh, also, when, when we as uh, teachers feel that, that our, our students didn't learn what we have, uh, had hoped or planned, then we could very easily uh, fall in, into this um, trap that, that we could just say, okay, I did everything that I should, I planned, I had all these nice uh, problems, I, have, uh, I made a very good lecture, uh, so if they didn't understand it, they must be stupid. So, and that's, that's a very dangerous thing to do, I think, to begin to look at your, uh, the student body and, and divide it into groups, the good students and the bad students, because the good students, they're, they're going to, to, well, they're going to thrive anyways. And, and we, if we kind of give up on the bad students, we shouldn't call them bad students because they, they don't exist. They, I think that we, we, we have to uh, accept that there are no good students and no bad students. There are only different ways of learning. Uh, and, and, and if we instead of uh, focusing on the teacher, uh, focusing on uh, the learning, so that the outcome of, uh, of, of our uh, teaching, then we will focus on the student and we will begin asking questions like, how would you prefer to, to learn? How would you prefer to read or listen or look to uh, videos, uh, do problem solving, or what is the best way for you to, to learn this? Uh, this topic, this subject, are there some times that are better than others, uh, and uh, are there some places where you would prefer to to be uh, learning? Uh, these questions we can't really ask today because how is is really uh, determined by the teacher. When is determined by the classroom schedule. And where is that's the on campus? We, we can't really 
uh, change that in the traditional settings. But we have the possibility in the online uh, situation that we have to make, uh, we can make more allowances for, for people to, to choose their learning environment. Uh, so, as a teacher in this, uh, in this setting, our job will be more to provide uh, the tools and the, the curriculum to allow uh, for the, the students to, to have a learning process. So, what we're going to do in the new uh, education is that we will we will offer this as an online, uh, this bachelor uh, study as an online, uh, uh, an online study, but we will, we will kind of, we will try to mix it. So there will be both on campus students and online students, and they can mix and match as they want. Some on campus students can choose to, to stay at home uh, some days or a week or whatever. And some online students can choose to come to, to the campus to, to uh, engage with the other students. So, but we want, we want the start of the study to start with a week-long boot camp where we gather all the students, uh, ev uh, either uh, or both the online and on-campus students should come to, this, uh, to the campus so that we can set up the computers and. Uh, form the teams that we will need uh, during the study and uh, well introduce them to the teachers and, and, and get a, a, a relationship going between the, the students internally but also between the students and the faculty. The semester we will use this uh, we call uh, it, it's not an uh, it's not our invention but the idea of the flipped classroom uh, that will be the main way that we are going to teach. So we will have, the, the students will prepare for, for the sessions, uh, which we all also, also will have. They will plan by looking at videos at home, doing small problems, and uh, so there will be video lectures and, uh, and they have to read stuff and, and things like that. So that they're prepared for the, uh, the session, the, the uh, online sessions or on campus session where uh, where the uh, where there will be discussion about what was uh, what was the important part of the lessons for today and there will be problem solving and uh, stuff like that uh, and, and there's a there's something that we haven't tried yet we, we don't know if it's going to work but we want uh, to gather people both online and on campus on this, in the same uh, time so that people on campus can interact with the online students via, uh, uh, via the internet. So a little more about the flipped classroom. In the top we have the traditional class. The teacher is going through the topic for the today and the, the students uh, are listening and then they go home one by one and, and study the, 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 the primarily the text for, for the class. In the flipped classroom, there will be a uh, preparation part where the students are prepared for the, uh, the lesson at home. And then when they come to the, to the lesson, the, the teacher will be more a facilitator than uh, a lecturer. And uh, the students will, uh, uh, engage with the topics and with uh, uh, each other, uh, so that they they use the preparation in the classroom, uh, and and they can use uh, the discussions between the students to to further improve their learning. That's the idea. So we'll, uh, it's, as I said, it's not our invention, and it seems that that they have been quite. Uh, successful stories about it. So we are going to use Adobe Connect for the collaboration part and life size uh, for streaming. Uh, it's not really important. Uh, this is an electronics uh, uh, study. So we, we, will, we have made this uh, box with all this uh, stuff that, uh, the, that the engineer will need. So there will be uh, a breadboard, a PC oscilloscope, uh, an embed, 
um, computer and well, all the tools that they need so that they can do exercises at home. Uh, we will, uh, they will get this the first week and they will take that home so they can use it uh, by themselves. Uh, the on-campus stu uh, students, of course, uh, will be able to use the laboratories, uh, the facilities that we have in, on the campus. Um, so, final topic, and I think I'm almost out of time. So, how can we use Python in online uh, education? Well, of course, you can use Python for teaching program. That's uh, that's no not really any news. But I think it's actually a very good uh, way of, of teaching computer science also. Um, but since this is a, an, an education which focus on embedded uh, in, uh, uh, systems, we need to supplement it with uh, some C so that, uh, that, they can, that the students will have that on the CV as well. Um, I want to use the IPython notebook as a MATLAB uh, replacement. Uh, and I, I think that's perfectly uh, reasonable, uh, but well, we'll see. I, I'm, I'm not the only teacher on, on my education, so no. Uh, okay, so uh, when uh, th this is just an observation that when we have these internships, we go and and uh, and, and well, we talk with the students uh, while they are at the internship for, to see if they are all right. And then we actually more time than not, time than not, uh, discover that Python actually is used in the industries for, for different uh, things. So I don't think it's necessarily a, um, a downside to, to be able to write in your uh, on your CV that you have used Python during your education. I think that's that's perfectly valid to to, to have that. So I'm at the end. You can read this. Uh, I, I have spent all my time, so thank you. Thank you, Anders. Any questions? Hi, thanks for the, the talk. Um, you mentioned students potentially becoming disengaged and isolated if they're online only students. How do you know if that's happening? Um, do you do any analysis of of their usage, and if you do see someone who's gone like that, what do you do about it? So, uh, what I didn't uh, discuss here was, was how we are going to follow up uh, throughout the, the semester. But we will have one-to-one uh, uh, one -one, one -one, uh, Skype sessions with with, uh, with the online students. We, we do that already with the on-campus students. We talk to them more times uh, throughout the semester to, to see how they are, how they work, uh, if, if the curriculum is suitable for them or if they are, the teamwork is okay and, and stuff like that. So we, we, we try to, to interview uh, our students in order to, to make sure that they are, um, they are okay. Uh, at the, but that's something that we, we value, uh, that there should be a very uh, close uh, closeness between the students and the faculty. We, we want to have that. Uh, and, uh, and we want to be approachable as well. Uh, so uh, and that's also why we have want this uh, boot camp to, to actually show ourselves as, uh, well, we are teachers, but we are also human beings and we are not dangerous. So. Any more questions? No? Thank you, Anders. Thank you.